I'm going to be as forthcoming as I can with you, Mr. Anderson. If you want to make a popular YouTube video, you don't do what I'm about to do, which is attempt to be useful. So look in the corner there, and the like-dislike feature has been disabled for this video because I'm going to be honest. I'm going to show you my crappy assortment of wood chisels that I've used throughout the years, and admit to you that most of them are usually about as sharp as a sack full of wet mice. Now if it pleases you, you can strop them and sharpen them and micro-bevel them to no end and then polish the knob. But that really doesn't make it much more of an effective tool, does it? Usually we're in a hurry and through the bulk of my life, what I've done is just quickly repaired them on the belt sander. And this jig helps me do that really quickly. Chisel goes in the slot upside down and then you press the whole thing on the belt sander. I'm sure you probably figured that out already, so take a close look. The brass bolt, it's nothing fancy, it's actually just from a toilet bowl. The hex nut goes up into a little spot for it, and then as you tighten it down, the nut presses up against this arm. The entire thing has been made out of maple, and that's because maple is hard, and wear resistant. There are plenty of other similar things to this out there on the internet. I saw somebody had made something like this where the belt was cut in half so that only a center strip of belt was um, on the belt sander and then these two skis straddled that and then because these were never consumed by the the belt sander, it would last forever. This one is made to be consumed, but since you, when it's in use, you kind of apply pressure to the front where your chisel is, where it's proud, the back just kind of skims along and you could do a thousand chisels before it has to be repaired. It's very easy to make. You just cut um, 25 degree triangles and then, and then of course, you'll have to custom cut your uh, these triangles to accommodate the chisel handles that you have. Since there's a million different manufacturers of chisels, there are a million different ways to cut them off. A couple things to note. This indicator line was just made by setting the entire jig on a piece of glass and tracing a steel rule. And that way I can tell if the wood is getting consumed uh, unevenly because we want to preserve it at 25 degrees. When the angle is set this way at approximately 25 degrees, if you pull the chisel back, you can imagine that it gets steeper as it goes back and the jig drops down. This will kind of make a micro bevel for you so that you don't have to think of it as a separate process. So just as a general rule when you use something like this, you can put it in the jig and as you go through your sanding, you can gradually move it back a little. Don't ever move it deeper into the jig or else you'll get the opposite of a micro bevel, which will make a weaker edge. Note here that we have 25 degrees in blue and 30 degrees in red. The angle in question here is with respect to this edge of the chisel and this edge. So pretend that this is on the flat line at the bottom of the protractor and the back edge is what we're holding against the colored line. So a 25 degree angle is ideal, but it's a bit sharp and that makes it a bit weaker. It dulls easier. So a 30 degree micro bevel makes it a little bit tougher. It makes it a little bit more snub and thus that a little bit less likely to dull quickly. Of course, most all of this is almost academic because if you're anywhere within from here to here, your chisel will work just fine. How do I know this? From years of using it on a sharpening on a belt sander by eye. In terms of keeping a consistent and precise angle, there is a design flaw with this, and that's that the ramp that the chisel goes against 
It's the top part of the chisel that presses against that ramp. So the angle is relative to the top of the chisel. And in this chisel, which has a stupid design, it tapers from here down. That's a nice idea in terms of chisel usage, but in terms of resharpening it, it's not very practical. A better chisel is flat. Well, this one you can't really tell. Here's an old chisel I've had for 20 years, and you can see that it, it has a consistent thickness the whole way through. If it appears otherwise, it's just an illusion. This is probably my favorite chisel. I think it's an 1116 Popular Mechanics circa 2000, if I had to guess. At one point, it was red, white, and blue. It was fancy. And even though it's rusty, this is my favorite chisel, so I do keep a micro bevel on it. And this one is usually, when it's in repair, good enough to shave hair. And for those cases, I do have separate jigs that take longer, but this jig is more for like quick and dirty, let's do it and get done sort of jobs. And that's why it's good for these Harbor Freight chisels or Stanleys or Fat Maxes, which are all junk. I have a set of brass bars here. This one's 5 16 and I can use that if I'm in the mood to keep the chisel square in the jig, but really you can just do it by eye. Don't sell yourself short. You're capable of using your eye to be in incredibly precise. I mean, most, most uh, block planes, as I was saying earlier, are set in exactly that manner. How do you tell if it's proud? You just look as I press this down to the piece of glass. I can feel the glass, and now as soon as the glass starts to lift the front of the jig, I know that it's proud enough to sharpen. Whoa, camera glitch. Okay, my chisel has been set nice and tight and centered, and remember, at this point forward, we only move the handle of the chisel backwards in the jig. No more sticking it more proud without having to start over. It had an embarrassingly bad edge on it last time. Who knows how I sharpened it? But we're getting there. This process is actually really quick and you don't have to use the water. It's just a precaution. When I was young and dumb, I used to let it get heated at the end and then the edges would get all, just don't do that. Keep it cool. I'm applying gentle pressure to the front and the back just kind of floats. See that micro bevel looking thing at the end? That's not intentional. I have that much more to go. But the whole process so far has been a minute of belt sanding at the most. Another great thing about this jig is that it's easy to adjust it for squareness. As I said, you can tell. You can see squareness. Look how easy it is to tell right there. And so I just pivoted it just a little bit because of the leverage that you have here. Moving it just a sixteenth of an inch here has a pretty good effect on that. Okay, I am almost there. One, I'll give it one more buzz on here for about five seconds and then I'll put the quote micro bevel, bevel on it. Once you're this far, you didn't do anything wrong if there's a burr on the end, but we have to get that off. This is a piece of granite floor tile. You can, get, you can pick one up for probably three or four dollars at the home center. I used spray glue to put some 220 grit sandpaper on it. You don't have to do it a million times. That's about all I'm going to do. And now I'll back it off just a little bit. Just enough that it's perceptible that I actually did move it back. It's still in contact, so I was proud enough. And that should be it. The 
I still haven't taken the burr at this point. These aren't really my good jeans. Oh, wait, actually they are. Shit, believe it or not, this is probably the best way I've found to get rid of that burr. Okay, now micro bevel. And that micro bevel is so micro that it's barely even there. And that's fine because I don't want to go too, too far back. I'm going to call that finished. Let's test it. Here's a piece of black walnut that we can test it on. And these are black walnuts. So the reason that I am even doing this is because my dad was over the other day and he was judging me as a lifelong carpenter would judge his son on his uh, dull chisels. So while he was here, we were eating some black walnuts. Look at this. That's not wood finish, that's black walnut. The nut itself, the fruit, is kind of waxy and oily. And you can use it as a wood finish. If the, if the walnut meat is older than a year, don't bother doing this, because it'll be pretty dry. Nuts are edible for, geez, six years or so, but uh, the oils are mostly gone after the first year. It kind of reminds me of some kind of wax. It's great stuff. I'm thinking about incorporating this into a project. Not a bad finish for a rough cut scrap, right? You know what my dad said about it? It's a waste of a walnut. <laughs> Looking at the edge up close, you can definitely tell that there's some room for improvement. We could put a finer belt on. The belt that I'm using was pretty coarse and also the micro bevel is virtually non-existent but that's okay. The proof is in the pudding. The goal here was to get it exactly as sharp as we need it to be in order to work. So I would like to tell you again I'm not here to win any awards for popularity. I just want this to be useful to you because if you're using a dull chisel, you're going to get hurt. Stop using dull chisels. Sharpen them, even if it means doing the bare minimum like I just did here. A simple jig, a couple minutes of work. I mean, even with this video, it still only took me a half hour, so in reality, this chisel has about two, maybe three minutes of work invested into it. And that's coming from something that you couldn't scrape mud off of your shoe with. That's definitely good enough for me. End grain is tough.